In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we look at the Gospel of Luke. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. In the Old Testament, in the book of Joshua, the battle of Jericho was the first battle of the Israelites in their conquest of Canaan. According to Joshua chapter 6, the walls of Jericho fell after Joshua's army marched around the city, blowing their trumpets. The old folks said in that timeless spiritual, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. And so here Jesus enters this city, made famous by the words of Joshua. And there a transformation occurs. A new life begins. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. As I mentioned on last Sunday, the tax collector was a member of the Jewish community who worked for the Roman government, collecting taxes imposed by Rome. Tax collectors were viewed as traitors, known by many as the lowest of the low. They took more than Rome demanded, and their excessive fees lined their pockets and filled their purses. Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Now, any time the subject of money comes up in a conversation, many misinterpretations of the Bible show up as well. The most common misreading of the Bible says that money is the root of all evil. In fact, the correct reading says the love of money is the root of all evil. The word love here refers to a worship of money. When money becomes an idol, it then is the root of all evil. When the possession of money becomes the highest good, then we see the growth of evil kingdoms, drug cartels, money, launderers, illegal arms dealers, unless we forget the white collar Wall Street Ponzi schemes. Like so many other things in the Western world, we are conflicted about money. I believe that you should get all you can and can all you get. God does not have a problem with our acquisition of money, but God is very concerned about the way we acquire our money and how we use it. There is a, 
a great line in a movie or a television series, the title I Cannot Now Remember, which has the main character saying, my family became rich the old fashioned way. We stole it. <laughs> there is no shame in acquiring large sums of money. Those who have it should feel no shame or guilt. The problem has always been with the way wealth is acquired. When wealth is gained by the exploitation of the poor, by deceitful business practices, or through criminal enterprises, God's word is clear and swift in its judgment. Many have gotten rich the old-fashioned way. They stole it. And so here we see Zacchaeus, a tax collector, who got rich the old-fashioned way. But he had heard about Jesus, and something about what he heard made him want to see this man about whom so much had been spoken. Luke says, he was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. The words that stand out for me in this text are, he was trying to see who Jesus was. Our Lord's reputation had preceded him. Like Zacchaeus, there has been something going on in the universe that makes us want to see Jesus. And when we see him, we want to get a clearer picture of him. We are here today because there is something in our bodies, something in our minds, something in our hearts that makes us want to get a better and a clearer picture of Jesus. The hymn writer said, just a closer walk with thee. Grant it, Jesus, if you please, daily walking close to thee. To thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close with thee. We pray that we might see him more clearly and walk with him more dearly. But Zacchaeus had never seen him at all. And yet there was this hunger, this deep need to see who Jesus was. He had surely heard that Jesus had changed the lives of many. And from this text, we see that this hunger, this deep need to see Jesus drove him to climb a sycamore tree. When Jesus came to the place where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down 
and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Here again, we see this disdain that people had for Jesus when he chose the company of sinners. I, for one, am grateful that he chose the company of sinners. I am grateful that he sat with them and ate with them and chose to be a guest in their homes. This gave many people hope and it continues to give me hope today. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. The New International Version says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. This tells me that no matter how many times you fall short, No matter what you do or what you fail to do, all you have to do is to hear the knock on the door and to let Jesus in. He will come in and he will take your bread and bless it. He will take your wine and sanctify it. Luke says, Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Here we have one of the great statements of repentance in the Bible. When we repent, we confess that we have sinned and that we will make amends with others and change any behavior which has caused any brokenness in ourselves or brokenness in others. Zacchaeus recognized that he had sinned and that he needed to take some action to make people whole. Now, the story of Zacchaeus stands in stark contradiction to the story of a businessman and a local United Way officer. A local United Way officer realized that they had never received a donation from the town's most successful businessman. The person in charge of contributions call the man to persuade him to make a donation. The caller said, our research shows that even though your business is the most prosperous in our town, you don't give a penny to charity. Wouldn't you like 
to give back to your community in some way? The businessman thought about it for a while and then said, first, did your research also show that my mother is dying after a long illness and has medical bills that are 10 times her annual income? Embarrassed, the night way caller mumbled, no, it, it, it didn't. The businessman continued, or that my brother, a disabled veteran, is blind and confined to a wheelchair. The United Way caller began to stammer, trying to find an apology. The businessman interrupted her apology and said, or that my sister's husband died in a traffic accident, leaving her penniless with three small children. The United Way caller was now speechless. She said, we, we had no idea. The businessman cut her off once again and said, so if I didn't give any money to them, why should I ever give any money to you? Zacchaeus said, Lord, I will give back half of what I have and even more than that to those that I have defrauded. And then Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. Jesus came to seek out and to save the lost. I'm glad that he came to save the lost. I'm glad that he dines with sinners. I'm glad that he accepts our repentance and remembers our sins no more. For this and more, we give God the glory and we give God the praise. Let us pray. We are so grateful, O oh God, for this gospel story for Zacchaeus and for his repentance. But most of all, we are grateful that you have reminded us that you stand at the door and knock. And all we have to do is to open the door and you will come in to us, bless our bread and sanctify our wine that we might be made whole once again. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.